My name is Chris, and today we're going to find out if there's a new big dog on the block when it comes to static elimination. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. A little over a month ago, I posted the video testing the efficacy and the methodology for using the Multipro Zero Stat 3 to remove static electricity from our records before playback. In broad terms, it was a great success for a new channel with a host of useful comments, positive support, and overall feedback. But there were some questions raised about my actions during the test that many of you wanted to see answered. Mostly this had to do with making sure I was grounded to avoid adding static to the test, which I covered in the plasma lighter test, but we'll revisit here later, and testing the record on the turntable itself, so I took note of the most consistent and major concerns that you brought to light and set them aside for a bit while I did some research. While I and the community at large were eager to see another set of tests to check my accuracy, I had other videos in the works and needed to be completed, and I wanted to make sure I was bringing the most correct information available to the new tests to avoid repeating any errors while also eliminating as many new ones as possible. After compiling a list of tests to be performed and avoided, as well as the reasoning behind each test to try and clear up any questions you might have, I realized that I wanted to test yet a different static elimination tool. For one thing, I think many of you would like to see this device tested and reviewed, and for another, it gives me an additional avenue for any mistakes to be brought up before I make the battle royale of static dissipation between the Milti, the Plasma Lighter, and this, the FreeRotech DSTAT 3. I stumbled upon this product one evening while doing a bit of research about the Milti and was instantly intrigued. Every source from which I read lauded praise upon this device and assured anyone listening, or reading I suppose, that this was by far the best product on the market for eliminating static. It had it all over the Milti, and if you were serious about your record playback and static elimination, there was simply no alternative. Its advocates were quick to point out that the DSTAT's ease of use with one button operation, as well as the advantage of its consistency over the Milti, made it superior in every way. There were no trigger squeezes to count, no clicks to avoid, and no arguing over the lackluster instructions that led many to advise their own best method. No, here they had video proof from the manufacturer that all you need to do is hold the DSTAT above your item, hit the button, and in the case of records, move it around the grooves in a circular motion during its automatic 15 second cycle, and you were done. How could one argue with that? It's as simplistic as something could be. Couple that with the claim that it performs static reduction even better than the Milti as well, and I knew this product would end up at the show at some point. There was just one small problem. Upon searching for stores that sell the DSTAT, I uncovered its cost. You can probably imagine my surprise, as well as my guessing yours right now, when I tell you that this little curling stone shaped electronic device cost almost $400. Now, I'm used to the hi-fi market, and specifically the arena of record collecting being a beacon for ridiculous markup on what always looks to be simple products performing simple tasks, but this was crazy. $400 for what seemed to be a glorified handheld ionizer? What in the wild world of sports made this thing so special? While I can't say specifically why Furutech priced it in the range they did, as you can see, I have one in my hand, so I obviously bought it. But let me tell you why. Shortly after finding the DSTAT for sale at a few vendors around the web, Music Direct had them marked at a discount. Looking back, I'd like to say that it was my dedication to making this channel the best it could possibly be that led me to instantly clicking the buy button, but a family friend named John Jameson and a few of his sons stopped by my house that evening and may have had an influence over my purchasing decision. Whatever the case, I decided to put down the 329 bucks, which is still a fair amount of money, mind you, but better than 400 and waited for the package to arrive. With Music Direct close enough to my house that I usually get things in no more than a day or two, I was quickly able to start using this expensive static eliminator on a daily basis to see what I thought of it. As described in the forums and articles I'd found around the web, this thing was, in fact, extremely easy to use and seemingly very effective at its job. Just how effective, you might ask? Well, let's grab a few records, take a few readings, and find out. Oh, and before we move on, yes, there was actually a DSTAT 1 and a DSTAT 2. The number 3 on the latest model wasn't a play on the Milti or some sort of passive-aggressive maneuver. I just thought you might be curious. To try and cover as many concerns as possible in this video, we're going to establish some baseline facts first. Many of you stated that holding the record close to my body was creating a false reading. We're going to test that now just to see what we get, but for the remainder of testing, I will in fact be grounded once again using an anti-static strap around my ankle. 
So I'm currently not strapped or grounded. Let's take a record and see what kind of ratings we get. I'm going to use the label here to guide me and measure in four places to try to be as consistent as possible so that way we can tell if in fact the grounding strap is making any difference. There will be slight variances because it's a very sensitive instrument but we should get a better idea. So that's a seven, five, two, three. Now I'm going to strap in, do the same measurements and see what we get. All right, I'm strapped in. Let's take another set of ratings and see if we have any difference. Six and a half, two, two, two. So not a whole lot of difference. That's not to discredit the theory that holding the record close to my body is giving a false reading. However, as we can see, there really isn't a whole lot of change. But moving forward, I will be strapped in for the remainder of the tests. Now that that's out of the way, we come to the very divisive issue of measuring static and its elimination on or off the turntable. The working theory for many of you is that since we play records on the turntable, that's where measurements should be made. A fair and reasonable idea, but I've encountered a few people as of late, as well as some very informative articles online, who know a good deal more about electricity, dielectrics, and the dissipation than I do, and they say measuring and treating the record on the table is in fact the opposite of what we should be doing. Let me try to explain why. While it is indeed true, clearly, that we play our records on the table, measuring and treating for static there is very inefficient. For one, as seen in my plasma lighter test video, the readings dropped significantly once the record was placed on the table. This wasn't an error in the meter as I thought. Instead, what happens is the conductive nature of the PVC transfers the static on the surface to the underside of the record, or from side A to side B, which is in turn now stored in the turntable temporarily. How temporarily? Well, just until you lift a record which brings all the static right back into the vinyl and is ready for the same thing to happen again when playing the other side. I'd wager many of you have experienced this phenomenon and have heard static pops when flipping an album. So when measuring the record on the table, we're not getting an accurate reading of the present static or the reduction thereafter when using a static eliminator. We're really just reading the residual static that's on the surface while the majority of it is stored just waiting to come right back. Now, the static eliminator is also said to be far less effective because the static dissipates into the turntable, which isn't a great idea considering the sensitive nature of the electronics in its makeup, but also because the eliminator, or the D-stat in this case, isn't really treating the static of the record because so much of it has moved. So using that logic, it would be a better idea to eliminate the static before we place the record down to avoid introducing as much static as possible to our turntable. But before we move forward with that as our baseline, we're going to test it to make sure that it's accurate. The first test for that will be measuring the static of a record without treatment, then measuring the record reduction when placed on the turntable, and finally the amount of reintroduction when lifting the album off. The readings for test one are 10, 13, 7, 4. On the table we have 0 0.3, 2, 0 0.7, 0 0.4. Now let's pick it up and see how much static is reintroduced. 8, 14, 15, 8, 15, 8, 4. So kind of consistent really. We have a little bit of difference here. It went down a touch, but it went up equally there. This went up, well, the measurement, which is a kilovolt. So it went up one kilovolt, but as you can see, measuring the record, placing it, we dissipate a lot of static, but when we bring it up, it all comes right back. The next test will be measuring again without treatment, then on the table, but now we'll treat the record on the table as well and check the reduction before once again measuring the record after taking it back off. We already have this record out, so we'll go ahead and use it again for the second test, measuring again because it will show us the repeatability of the test and the meter itself. Seven and a half, 13, six, three. Now we'll place the record on the table and take our readings there. 0 0.2, 1.4, 1, 1.2. Now let's give it a treatment with this and see if we can reduce those numbers at all. Point 
point zero eight point eight point two point two. So we definitely see a drop of, of numbers there. Now let's take it off and we'll get a further set of readings and see if that's done anything. Four and a half, eight, three, two. So again, when we put the record down, we're dissipating a lot of the static into the turntable. We did the reduction, which worked uh, a little bit here. Definitely it did some work here. But then when we picked the record up, the static all came right back. So treating a record here isn't doing a great job of actually treating the record. Finally, for the baseline testing method session of today's holy crap, that's a lot of numbers in a YouTube video segment, we'll test the record off the table, treat it off the table, and measure that reduction. Then, we'll place the record and take a reading of that on the turntable, and finally measure it one last time after picking up the record. For the next test, I'm gonna do it twice. Once with the same record, because we do have increased numbers once again, and then once with a new record to check for consistency. Four and a half, 10, three, two. Now we'll treat the record while holding it in hand and see what we get. Point one, point two, point two, point three. That's a very, very healthy reduction. Let's put it on the table and let's get the readings there as well. Point zero five. Point zero five, point zero three, point zero seven. That's a really large reduction. That is practically absolutely zero static when this record is sitting on the table ready to be played. Now let's pick it up, and this will be a big test to see how much electricity is reintroduced. Point two, point three, point eight, point five. This is an excellent result. We have steady static numbers here, four and a half, 10. Those are kind of high. Threes and twos aren't terrible, but on a turntable being so sensitive, it's also not great. We have really good reduction once we treat it with the D-stat, which is clearly doing an excellent job. Then putting it on the table, that bleed off is happening. We're getting even lower to practically nothing because 0 0.05 kilovolts is so very low. It's a, good, it's a very good thing. And then removing it though, we're still back to roughly where we were when we treated it. We're a little higher. We're a tenth, tenth, a few tenths, and a few tenths higher, but that's still an excellent result. I would say clearly with this record, and we'll try it again for consistency, that treating the record off the table is actually the better way to go. Here's our repeat of test three. 15, 11, eight, nope, nine, four and a half. Treat this again. And our readings, 0 0.04, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. Another set of excellent reduction numbers. Now let's get some readings on the table. 0 0.06, 0 0.1, 0 0.04, 0 0.4. I forgot this third number already. <laughs> now let's remove it, let's get those readings. 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 1.5, 2. I would say that empirically shows consistent proof that reading the record and testing the record are the better way to go. Well, reading because we get the higher number. We're seeing an actual number of what this is in a freeform space versus while static is being dissipated. Then treating it that way shows obviously reductions, very good reductions. This is a very effective tool. Putting it on the table shows us that it's gonna lower it even further, which is impressive. And picking the record back up, which is key, we're not reintroducing a boatload of static onto the record. Matter of factly, I would have no trouble flipping that record over, putting it down, 
with a quick dust and playing it again, we don't really need to treat the second side, I don't think. So we've established what our baseline testing should be now and moving forward until proven otherwise. So what's left to test of this thing then? How about a few more tests of its effectiveness? Let's take a few records, measure the before and after with just one cycle of the DSTAT and see how it performs. 12, 13, 8, 4. Point three, point six, point five, point four. Fourteen, eleven, eleven, six and a half. That's dead neutral, dead neutral, also dead neutral. I hope you can see it's flexing, it's going a little bit. 0 0.2, 0 0.6. 0 0.6. I would say so far that this is very impressive. Is it $400 impressive? Mm, only you can answer that, but that's a very, very big result. Now, why not try holding the DSTAT stationary in the center of the record and see what that does? Five, nine, ten. Five, ten, eight, five. Let's see what happens if we do stationary. Fifteen seconds seems a lot longer when you're just trying to hold your arm still. 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0 0.7, 2.2. 2. So we still got a pretty good reduction there, but I don't think that's a method I would want to use. We're not getting nearly as good numbers as we were with the other testing. Next, let's take a couple of records and test the DSTAT after using two cycles and see what difference, if any, we get. 9, 14, 10, 6. Let's run it twice and see what happens. 0 0.02, 0 0.06, 0 0.2, 0 0.02. That's a very big difference, but honestly, I don't see a whole lot of difference between the seventh record and the fifth record. We only ran that the one time, and our result was outstanding. So it might not be a case of more equaling better this time, but we'll try it again anyway. 12. Nine, six, three. We'll run it two times. Point zero four, point zero one, point zero six, true neutral. Well, I think for consistency's sake, these tests have performed very well. The DSTAT works amazingly well. I'm very surprised. I do want to do the mashup video where we test them all, but I have a feeling I already know who's going to win. Now, clearly, I am not in a scientific laboratory. I'm not going to ever be able to do perfect tests. Then again, no one can do a perfect test because it doesn't really exist in this sort of a medium, as far as I'm concerned. I might have missed something, and if I did, let me know. I like the comment section telling me we have such a great and busy comment section. That's how we got here with the improved testing and checking things out. We have a new method, which I think is an excellent standard, but if you disagree, let me know, and let's talk about it. 
In the meantime, what do you think about the DSTAT? Are you willing to spend $329, which seems to be the new price because it's been marked down or on sale for a while, on this kind of a device? Is static elimination worth that much to you? Do you think you need to have a very high-end system or do you not care at all because that's a lot of money for such a little thing to do such a simple job, but it does it incredibly well. I'd like to know, let us all know, and I look forward to next time.